Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. I am Chema. And I'm Eddie, reviewing Pixar's Onward. And this is the rollback. Also, since uh, since Chema, since this is your film, you know, this is more your story, you know, would you care to read the synopsis? In a mystical land that has long forgotten magic, teenage elf brothers Ian and Barley Lightfoot embark on a magical quest to spend one more day with their late father. And go. Go. All right. I, I actually watched it on theater, so I'm 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 good there. Disney has my money. Yeah, so let's talk about Pictures Onward, which was uh, directed by Dan Scanlon, who also wrote it, and he based it a lot on his relationship with his uh, with his uh, with his family. I'm guessing the elf part was was added and not part of the real story, but everything else appears to be right on the money. So basically, this story very very simple. It's about this. Uh, so there's two parts that are important to understand in this story. One that I really, really like and one that I did not like as much. Uh, and you can find my actual full review on the rollback.net, but and with, where I broke down these two halves. My main thing is this. The part that I do like is everything regarding the family. So the relationship between the two brothers, the fact that they're trying to bring back uh, the dad, the relationship with the mom, uh, the relationship with the with the stepdad, even there's a lot of moving parts here that I felt are very, very much. Uh, they work in a way that probably shouldn't, because we've seen things like this before. But I like the way that that, that they're doing it. Well, I, mean, uh, I, I think there were a lot of cliches, like there were, like the the whole like, oh, okay. you know, mom's boyfriend, you know, sh- chuckle, chuckle, you know that. There was a lot of that, but and it felt it felt a little tired. But at the same time, it's kind of like, look, if this is you know one of the doors you got to walk through to get to the meat and bones of the story, no, I'll, we'll do it. I'll walk it. No, and like they actually took the time to take some of these stereotypes and don't make them, you know, at, at least have fun with them. You know, like I feel but, like the stepdad would have been a jerk, and he's really not. He's just a, a stepdad. You know, he's awkward. You know, he's he's kind of doing like his own job. He reminded me of a uh, he reminded me of the stepdad in Ant Man. Like you remember the guy that married the mom. <laughs> the, the, oh the my ex-wife. god! You know, he he like it's the, the, the pretty much the same character. Where uh, no, he's not an asshole. He's just doing his job. They, they're both cops. You know, uh, they, is that they, the they, new cliche? Like in the nineteen eighties and the nineties, it was like douchebag stepdad, and the during the. 2000, the 2010s and the 2020s is going to be nice stepdad. Uh, I think we're going to need like two more movies to confirm that or not. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. only two that we've seen, and we're we've we haven't seen all the movies developed by the same studio though. Fair game, that? fair, yeah. fair, yeah, um, um, yeah, no, um, so what I really like was that, um, uh, I mentioned in my review that I felt the story, the main beats of the story were. They can say they, they 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 can say it's not, but it's very obviously based on uh, on Full Metal Alchemist, which is you know two brothers trying try, try to bring a, a family member back. But this is more PG, uh, and I like that. I like the relationship between the two of them. I I felt uh, I felt reflected in both of them at some points. In the older brother mostly, in the younger brother mostly. The scenes when he's trying to learn how to drive, I've been there. Sucks. And uh, merge. <laughs> And uh, there are things, like like I said, that could have been stereotypes but weren't. Uh, I pointed out in my review that I love that the younger brother is the one that gets to use the magic and never at any point the older brother is like jealous over it. On the contrary, he's very, he, he's always encouraging him and he's giving him tips and he, he's telling him everything he knows. Never, the, the, there's never a point where he goes like, I should have been the one or... Uh, why you, you know, never, you know, you always see him very, very jolly and very supportive. I was going to say, he reminded me a lot of uh, the character that Chris Pratt plays in Parks and Recreation. You know, he's very, uh, very selfless. not aware, very selfless, very not aware of a uh, thing. A, a, labor- a, a golden retriever, if you turn into a person, pretty much. And, <laughs> and that's kind of the character that he plays here, a, little, a, bit of, a bit of a clueless, big person. And then the younger brother, who's played by Tom Holland, is also great, doing his American accent from Spider-Man. And I like the movie. I very much like the movie. Uh, however, there, I felt like you can look at this movie in two ways. You can see it as, oh, it's a cool movie, cool, the animation's cool, source story's fun, the beats are fun, the, fan, the, the ending is uh, pretty, pretty gorgeous. Um, 
But you also have to look at it in the grand scheme of things, which is how does this movie represent Pixar now? And I think that's, that's going to be a bigger conversation that we can get at later. But staying in the – but before we do that, let's, let's actually like dive into the film. Um, I guess, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah. I liked it actually. Uh, to me, it might be the best original uh, story Pixar has done in a while. Uh, you know, n- none of the sequels, uh, none of this, you know, far reaching stuff. You know, I liked Onward. Um, I, you know, you, you spoke a bit about how the older brother, uh, their relationship, how the older brother is never jealous. I think maybe that goes to the Pixar rule of what is obvious and cut that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, if he had been jealous, oh, we've seen this before, but he never was, which was nice and refreshing. You know, he was just happy for his brother. He loves his brother. Um, I like the chemistry between the two. I like the fact that at one point, Star-Lord held Spider-Man at gunpoint and now they're brothers. Uh, I, I, you know, their voice acting was actually really good. I never once found myself thinking Star-Lord and Spider-Man or Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. Yeah. The whole time, I was just enjoying the film. Um, fun story something a little different um you know what kind of like punched me in the gut the very first thing that punched me in the gut from this whole film what the de- the goddamn unicorns <laughs> that that like tore me up a little bit like wait 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 what oh when they're when they're eating from the trash yes like yeah the unicorns man yeah that, I, I, that, that threw me through a loop and i know that's a dumb thing but to me that set the temple for the film of like okay this is different because you would expect the guy to like, you know, ride a unicorn at one point, you know, ride the Pegasus. Guinevere was a freaking Pegasus on four wheels, you know? Yeah. Um, I well, know. I liked how uplifting it was, like how honest it was. It was brutally sad, but uh, and he, Pixar shows, again, they know how to get to your feels. That's a sequence at the very end uh, where you see the two brothers and it just, it punches you in the heart because even though you kind of saw it coming a mile away, it's still such a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. And you don't get that often enough, especially right now. So I, I liked it. I really did genuinely like the film. Is it the greatest Pixar film of all time? No. No. But that doesn't mean it's not good. Pixar has such a stupidly high bar that their mediocre stuff would be the crown jewel in another studio. Yeah. Um, actually, one of my favorite uh, comments that I saw regarding this film was, uh, well, this is not too shabby for a DreamWorks sequel. Unfortunately, it's a Pixar original. <laughs> it's like someone uh, compared it online to like the, the quality is on par with like a DreamWorks sequel. What? Like the, the animation? No, just uh, oh, like the, the story. story, the beats, everything. Um, the best thing that I thought came out of this movie was was the ending was the the resolution to uh, to what was happening and it hit me in a good way i'm i'm gonna just go straight into it i like how in the end the younger brother doesn't get to meet the dad which sounds very very sad but (laughs) but i like that uh there's a lot of things that they could have done and i the only thing that i can i can compare it to is how i met your mother ending how it's like not even close to what everyone wanted to happen, but it was like, okay, that we this weirdly fits into what is happening, and hopefully one day you know we'll get to appreciate that in a in a better way. Um, but this is more happy, obviously. Um, it's got its moments. It's got uh, it's got its comedy moments that are really good. The thing that grabbed me the most in this movie was all the people are going to talk about the Dun- Dungeons and Dragon. Uh, um, not reference, but like the, it's not a rebuff either, but I guess like a, like a Dungeons and Dragons style game that, that, that they're doing in this, they're, they're going to end up selling that for real at the Disney store. Just, just you wait, but if they ever reopen, but uh, my God, main thing is like, a, <laughs> like my main thing was uh, I love all the Indiana Jones references in this movie. Like I love when a movie takes another movie for basis and just, repeat not repeats it but like grabs it beat by beat and just starts having a lot of fun with it what were some um, of the <coughs> excuse me what were yeah. some of the references because i didn't catch i didn't catch any indiana jones references i think the most obvious one is uh when they they're going on their like a 
falling door and they like slip right under it and then they, they come back for the dad and they just like slip it like underneath which which by the way when i first saw the trailer for this movie and they show that the whole gag of the film is that it's half of the dad like the waist to the bottom i thought that was freaking genius and i <laughs> i i wrote genius like uppercase all of it on my review i said this is this was this is that's a freaking genius joke and the fact that they kept it through the entire film and they made it both funny and emotional in a way that only Pixar can do it. I love that. I, th I thought that that was great. Now, earlier I mentioned these are the, the there's, there's two halves of the movie, one that I like, one that I didn't like. The part that I don't like and that I heavily disliked throughout was um, how the whole, it, 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 it's, it's an allegory for, oh, in the past we used to do magic and everything was a little harder, but it was pretty cool. And then we got uh, lazy and we build up technology and now uh, their world looks like our world except the houses look like mushrooms but I don't I don't like to see uh, fantasy and current world style mix uh, I think you I think it's very hard to pull off and I didn't love the way that they, they did it here I I mentioned this constantly in my review I don't. I didn't want. I didn't want to see elves with smartphones. You know, I didn't want to see elves on social media. And I like that they didn't spend a lot of time like referencing those kind of things because I feel like it makes the movie. It it, it times the movie. Like it makes it less timely. I mean, timeless. And that was my biggest gripe for the movie. The only the only movie that I can compare this with is uh, Lilo and Stitch, in which. I freaking love everything regarding the two sisters and the relationship and how they're growing up and everything that they're going through. And I mildly like the alien stuff. Wait, you, know? wait, you didn't like Stitch and Lilo and Stitch? I like Stitch. I just, I don't care for the whole, uh, they're chasing him, they're trying to find him, they're trying to bring him back. He's, he's a creation of this, of this doctor. Like, like those parts are okay. They're not great. And everything with the sisters was great. And that alone could have been like the whole movie, but they have to make it. They have to. They have to add like a like a spin, I guess. And that is what brings me to like the big conversation, which is um, well, I I want to move on to like the big conversation of of how this affects P Pixar and what does it mean for them. But before we move on to that, do you have any any thoughts on the on the film that you wanted to add? I mean, I didn't mind the the fact that it took place in you know modern times. I didn't mind the smartphones and the social media. I think that was just their way of like, uh, I guess, grounding the film to some degree. Because I mean, uh, Pixar, uh, I might be wrong when I say this, but I don't think they've ever made a film out of nothing, if that makes sense. Like creating a 100% wholly fresh without a basis. You know what I mean? Toy Story is grounded in toys in the real world. Cars, cars in the real world. Um, you know, Wally, -E, Up, um, Finding Nemo, you know, they're all relatively real grounded in reality to some degree so i think maybe i don't know um i don't want to say maybe pixar was shy about creating a brand new world from scratch but maybe they want to concentrate more on the emotional story versus the setting by the way the animation what did you think of it because to me pixar's on the game i thought it was crisp as hell um do you remember when the good dinosaur came out the you ever ended up watching that no, unfortunately. I never got around to it. It's on the Pixar list along with Cars 2, Cars 3, and Finding Dory. Um, okay. Um, I, so I like The Good Dinosaur. I was probably one of the, like, the nine people that liked The Good Dinosaur. And, but I didn't love it. And the big thing that I got out of it was that it, it looked beautiful. Like that, like that is, like I feel like the budget that they sank into the backgrounds and and the trees and the mountains and the water and everything. It, it's, it's, the, it's one of the best looking Pixar movies to date. Like you could have that movie as like a wallpaper and constantly moving and it still looks amazing, which is why the fact that the dinosaurs in that movie look extremely cartoony may, doesn't let it pop correctly. Um, and and I, I always said, if we could have like this animation with like a better story and with like fast talking humor i think it would work i i dug a lot of the animation here and i, I saw it reflected i mean i mean give it to them i mean to, toy, the first toy story even though it's a cgi film it still looks great and guess what uh 
a couple of decades later, they're looking even better. The only way that I can compare it to is every time that a new Smash Brothers game comes out and you think, yeah, man, this game, this game just cannot look better. And then the new one comes out and you're like, oh, wow, it can look better. Huh, so. Fair, fair. I, I can hear that. Go ahead. No, no um, I was going to say, did you, did you go into this film? Did it live up to your expectations? Did it live below them? I mean, what did you think about it? I'm so glad you asked that because I did not have any expectations because I low-key forgot that it, had, that it was coming out. And that's literally like my first line in my review. I said, this is, the le- this is the Pixar movie with the least advertisement that I've ever seen. And I don't know why. I feel like, this, I, I, feel like I should have seen this in Happy Meals. I feel like I should have seen this in Toys. I feel like I should have seen this in, uh, I don't know, Shorts. Uh, I, I, I don't know if maybe I'm older now and I don't circle around where the, the advertisement for this would have been, but I'm also a millennial and I feel like this movie should have been targeted to me specifically and it wasn't, which is uh, something that I also wanted to talk. Do you think Pixar is, uh, do you think at this point they're like, oh, we'll release a movie whenever we want and we'll, people will watch it. Like, like we don't have to try. Or do you think like the way that movies are advertised now, especially these kinds of movies don't require as much advertisement as they did before. Honestly, um, being the conspiracy theorist that I am, I think it's a mix of both, but also a third thing. Um, So Pixar is owned by Disney, but it's kind of like its own thing. It's like, uh, it's like Lucas films. They're owned by Disney, but they're their own side thing. Yeah, and if you notice the Pixar films as of late, they have been dropping necessarily in quality, but they've been dropping in uh, in advertisement. You know, with the exception of Toy Story four, um, I don't remember seeing very much advertisement for like The Incredibles two. Finding Dory was advertised, you know, basically by Ellen, and that's it. Yeah, it's been going down. Like they've been spending less on advertising because I do think to some degree they're on a Marvel level of like, oh, it's another Pixar movie, let's go watch it. But also at the same time, I kind of feel, and again, this is the conspiracy theorist in me, that maybe Disney is prioritizing their feature films over Pixar's films. Because mm-hmm. for example, like I, Onward, I believe, if you, put, if you stack Onward against Frozen 2, Onward beats the shit out of Frozen 2. Like storytelling wise, animation, like to me, by far, it's not even in the same weight class. But look at everything that went into Frozen. Granted, maybe it's just because of how much money they can make from the toys and whatnot. But seemingly, they didn't invest as much. It, this is not Iron Giant bad, but bad. Uh, it's a uh, and like the big the big thing is this: in the past five years, um, the only original Pixar films that have come out is are this Inside Out and Coco. And that's it. Uh, all the others have been sequels, sequels. or prequels. Sequels or prequels, yeah. Um, actually, I think Monsters uh, University came out before 2015, so that counts. Yeah, yeah let's let's say it counts. Um, so yeah, this this doesn't feel like a Pixar film. It feels like a it, it, it feels like a Disney animated film, and that's why I feel like, except for the ending, which I feel like which I feel like is pure Pixar. I think the more that we go forward, we're going to start to see less differences between these two. And the other big thing that I wanted to mention is in a world where we're finding so many new and very talented animators that were working on new things, how does a studio like Pixar that has been doing like mostly sequels and prequels for the last few years, and this is like the, the big original story, you know, how does this stack up to, you know, other animations that are, you know, they, they also want a piece of that cake. They, and, and they're also grabbing a lot of attention. Where are the Tom Moores, the, uh, the Masaki Yusa, Yusa the, uh, the Hayao Miyazaki's, the, the, where is the, the people, from, the, people that, the, the 12 directors that made Into the Spider-Verse? Um, how... Our Pixar, who has ruled the world of animation for so long, how are they going to stack up with all these new, um, all these new prospects that are coming up and that are stealing Oscars money and uh, attention from them? 
you know, because everyone will still always keep going, keep going to see, you know, Pixar films in the theater. But for example, this one, uh, I went to see it. My family did not go to see it. I went to see it with a couple of friends and my family were like, they, they came up with a new one. Like I, like a completely, like they, like they completely skipped skip my mind. And I usually, and I usually always put my family there in comparison as like the average movie goer. So that's why I ask, like, can, will, will we see a dip in, in maybe not Pixar quality, but like maybe the number of films they release or like the, the, the box office that they make. Do you think we're going to see a dip in the next, let's say another five years? I think we're going to see uh, what generals like to call a strategic withdrawal. Because here's the thing, Pixar, as amazing as they are, they can't, they can't pull another 2015, 2017. They can't keep producing two films a year. So we've been seeing them slowly slow down over time. The animation quality is still amazing. They're storyboarding, though. Uh, the kids who grew up watching Pixar are grown-ups now, and they're producing their own films. And I do believe they've taken some story beats from Pixar that make them a little less original. Um, you know, the whole, hey, don't do the ending that everyone's expecting. Do, like, the fifth possible ending that everyone's expecting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think they're doing that. Um, other creators are doing that. And by doing so, I mean, Pixar doesn't quite stack up as well. I, I don't think, uh, excuse me, I don't think we're going to see a dip necessarily in the quality of the storytelling, but their competition is getting stiffer. Again, the kids that grew up watching Pixar, that had all these ideas. Oh, now there are a lot more companies out there. There's a lot more resources out there that will allow them to tell those story ideas. Hey, here's a love letter to Pixar. Boom, into the Spider Verse. Or hey, here's a love story to here's a love letter to Pixar. Boom, insert any good uh, any good CG movie, uh, 3D movie. Have you uh, uh? Do you remember the movie Hereditary? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Okay. Okay, so the director, Ari Aster, before he made that movie, he made like a couple of short films. And one of his shorts is called Manchowson. And it's about this, this mom and his son. And, the son. and her son is about to go to college. And she is feeling a bit sad that, that he's leaving her. And so she poisons his food and kills him. Okay. And the whole short is shot and it feels like a like the opening to up like where it's all music okay and, tragic. and yeah he, he pretty much said like i wanted to do like my own pixar short but i made it mine so if if no one has ever checked out arias to short man and check it out because that's 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 as deranged as a pixar short can get i think hey so this director he he both directed and wrote the film uh i'm looking at a cv right now um, he has Monsters University on his on his resume, um, yeah. al among other a lot of other films. He the poor guy made his bones during you know direct to DVD films for Disney. Yeah. Um, do this, you think uh, this Max Scanlon guy? Yeah. Or, um, although yeah. I'm looking at it right now, I'm wondering what his next project is because he's got nothing down right now. Apparently, he made a couple of shorts, and that's it. Um. I don't know, man. Uh, the only other movie he directed was the, was Monsters U, which I thought it was just okay. Didn't love it. Uh, Pixar has lost uh, like one of his best one of his best talents, which was who was Pete Doctor. And I don't know. And to me, he's the best. He's hands down the best the, the best Pixar director. And if he's gone, I think it's gonna get a little bit tougher for them. I mean, they already they they're still suffering through the loss of their of uh Lassiter? yeah of, of Lassiter, which uh you know good riddance but i don't know it's uh brad bird is still attached to maybe do something else i don't know if he's gonna do an incredible an incredible three i don't think so um they scrapped that uh that gigantic movie they were doing which was going to be based on jack and the beanstalk but the the twist was going to be that the giant was a baby i thought that was a pretty sweet idea but then they scrapped it <laughs> that's insane um, but i would like to see that I would have loved to have seen it too, but I don't. But they they canceled it, and I don't know. I don't know what Pixar's gonna do next. They don't really. Ha they they have one more movie 
uh, which is this soul movie that is going to come out about this guy that dies and like his soul is still around. Um, it's also going to be a movie about jazz, but the score is going to be done by the people who did the score to the social network, which is the least jazzy thing that you, that you can hear in the world. So I don't, I don't know if that next film will affect the future of Pixar. I mean, I, I don't know what this one, this movie made, uh, on, uh, uh, speaking of Onward, Onward has done like no blip. Like I haven't seen it do, like I, I'm not seeing people quoting the film. I'm not seeing uh, people talking about how, how special it was moving past opening night. Um, I haven't really been seen it in conversation for probably an Oscar next year. I just, I don't see this movie having a lot of staying power. And that worries me when you're the biggest studio in animation. Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I just, I think this is a conversation that needs to be had. And I think this, uh, well, this movie is good. Uh, I don't see it having a lot of staying power. I mean, it, it's already, sh- I mean, freaking uh, Frozen 2 did, did, did not have a lot of staying power. And I don't know, like, are we just moving forward from, from animations like this? Because people are, people are talking about Into the Spider Verse as being probably one of the best animated films of all time and one of the best superhero films of all time. So, like I said, in a world where we're getting that, where we're having movies like Your Name, where we're having movies like, uh, uh, I don't know what else, um, freaking, uh, freaking uh, Isle of Dogs, and we're having th- things that are a little bit more different, a little bit more weird, I mean, even in the Golden Globes, like uh, they, the, the movie that won was uh, uh, Missing Link, which was the, the, the Leica film that, the, that almost no one saw. Um, and, that, and then this year, uh, Toy Story 4 won the, won the Oscar, but uh, I felt like they, they were just like, oh, it's fucking Pixar, just give it to them, like, whatever. Toy Story, what and, are you going to do, Rob? The, uh, Toy Story won Best Animated Film, what, for all three? What, you're going to drop, you're going to rob them of yeah. their uh, quad trick? Was was Toy Story four the best? The best of the of, of the was Toy Story four better than three or not? Oh God, no! But I mean, no, if then then it's not following up the momentum of the last one, and that's that's where the it that's where I think this conversation should be should be leading, you know. So, but no, but here's the thing, though. Like, I don't think it's necessarily can you be better than the other one. It's can you be as good as the other one in a different way. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, Toy Story 1 never made me cry. It never made me, like, get the feels. It was just a really fun movie. Toy Story 2, you know, brought some of the feels, but, you know, made, you know, kind of expanded ideas and whatnot. Toy Story 3 went all the way with those ideas. You know, it's not necessarily about uh, lifting. It's not about being better. It's more or less about expanding on the ideas. Toy Story 4 arguably did expand, but it's not better than the third. Yeah, but okay. So this one, like, it is onward. Like, if you if you had to rank the movies from the last five years in in Pixar, uh, Inside Out, Coco, Incredibles two, Cars three, Finding Story, Toy Story four, and Good Dinosaur, would onward be on like the top three? Okay, so in from Inside Out on forward, right? So let's say so let's uh. Let's, uh, you, you said you haven't seen Cars 3 and Finding Dory, right? Yes, but trust me, I don't need to. Okay, so let's just count Inside Out, Coco, Incredibles 2, and Toy Story 4. Like, and, good, well, let, let's not just count Good Dinosaur. So between Inside Out, Coco, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4, and Onward, is Onward in the top three of those five? <sighs> okay, not cutting out the nostalgia. If I'm cutting out the nostalgia, I would say yes. I okay. think Onward was a good direction and a positive direction. It's a new direction. I think it's something they need to continue on. Coco was original. Uh, Onward's original. Soul, the film that they're going to have coming out later on this year, hopefully later on this year, is an original film. And they have four dates in the next uh, three years. Yeah. Hopefully, And they haven't announced anything. Hopefully, they'll all be originals. The Cars trilogy is hopefully dead. <laughs> Please let Toy Story rest in peace. I would kill to see an Incredibles 3, actually. Uh, I'd be okay if I wait another twelve years for another Incredibles. I'm I'm okay with that <laughs> because do you know how freaking good that's gonna look? Like if the animation keeps getting better, I I, I didn't want to do this. I'm gonna have to play you, but just imagine how the mom is gonna look and like with animation from like twelve years from now. See, and I wanted to avoid that 
but you brought it up. I was literally dancing around. I was like, nah, I'm not going to mention it. You did. All those memes that came out, like when Incredibles 2 came out on Facebook, all those memes, and then you yeah. brought this up. Uh, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to from this it. topic. I had to do it. Oh, you embarrassing motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, see, from, from, from these movies, I think Inside Out, Coco, and Incredibles 2 are the best of the last, of the last five years. I think uh, Inside Out probably being my, my, my favorite one. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to see sequels for a bit. I don't want to see sequels or prequels or whatever the fuck plane was, Planes was. I'm, gonna, I'm okay with seeing like, more originals. But, for example, if you see the trailer for Soul... Like it starts really cool. It starts, it starts with this cool voiceover by Jamie Foxx who's playing the main, who's playing the main character. And the soundtrack sound, sounds like it's going to be really good. And then they show the idea of the fact that he's going to be dead the whole movie and he turns into a soul. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of like the Emperor's New Group. But then they have this other soul that's accompanying him and, sh- and the other soul starts doing the freaking backpack kids dance. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is what we're doing. We're to Generation C. And I get it. I know they have to do it, but I don't... See, this is why I watch anime. <laughs> it's timeless, and it's not, and and they don't feel the need to like reference stuff or like make it make it like modern. I guess because I've been, because I've I've seen that a lot. I've seen that present in most of the Pixar canon. I I kind of want it back. I kind of want that back. You know, uh, it didn't bother me in something like Zootopia because it felt it felt like the the whole world did not, was not afraid of being surrounded by it. Here, I don't think it works as well. And, I mean, yeah. I mean, but is it so much about being timeless, or is it more less about grounding the film? Um, it's a fair gripe, by by all means, like it is fair. But yeah. I think I think at the same time, their whole thing was not necessarily about uh, about the the visual aspects of it more than the story beats. Yeah. Which was, you know, hey kids, you don't got a dad, but you want to see him for a day? We got away. And. So is I it fair to criticize because I was trying to be positive? And I was like, no, he can have another day with his dad. Just, just, just wait a day. <laughs> I was trying to be a douche. I was, I was just trying to – I just wanted him to meet his dad. I wanted him to meet his dad too, but in the end, he doesn't, and we're, and we're all weirdly okay with that. that. That was the best part. <laughs> well, I think it's Which, because it wasn't so much about – I don't know. It's weird. It wasn't all about the dad. It was more or less of him kind of realizing that he always had his brother there. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and like I said, if there's one shining light in this film, it's the ending. And that, that whole realization when they do like the whole backtracking and he's got like the list of everything he's going to do with his dad and he realized that he did it all with his brother. Like that, that I thought was, was, really, was really sweet and very, very cool. Um, I just want to know if, is the movie good? Yes, but I think they did a smart thing in releasing it to Disney Plus really early. I mean, I know it's because we're in a pandemic, but... Spoiler alert think... for anyone watching this in 20 years. <laughs> the history books will remind you, son. Um, no, I think, they made a, I think they made a super smart decision in dropping this into Disney Plus immediately and to really rush the Blu-ray release because I think it's a movie that's better seen like at home with like family where you can pause it every once in a while. But because I saw it in theaters and I thought it was fine, but I, I wouldn't run to see it like again you know and that's actually why what, what i used to close my review i said uh pictures onward is a good reminder that the studio he still has it when it comes to making original films uh i will welcome this direction with more open arms and the focus more on making the films more timeless instead of timely until then i will keep buying my ticket but probably less at opening nights and more when i find the time and that pretty much sums up what i thought about this movie i thought it's good yes uh am i glad i watched it absolutely would i watch it again not voluntarily. Like if I'm with a, a friend or a family member that's like, oh, I haven't seen that. I'm like, yeah, sure, let's watch it. But I wouldn't seek it out again, you know? I mean, do you think it's also possible that this was just a good, uh, feel good film to watch? Because I, it I, I saw it at home, you know, in bed with my ankle, like taped up and hiked. And it was so nice to watch and I was enjoying it. And I, I found myself laughing actually a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I, I legit lost my shit laughing when the mom was right, was jumping up the tail of the dragon to stab it with a sword. And I hear like her, her uh, beat music that she exercises to, and I lost my shit. Like I was, I couldn't stop laughing. 
She's a fearless uh, warrior. I have a fear that I can hear, I can hear like every middle-aged mother in this country just watching it and be like, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. I, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I think everyone right. needs to watch this. I think this film is worth being watched. I think this film is worth yeah. being watched by anyone and everyone that can. It's uplifting, seriously uplifting, even though he never meets the dad, as you've said. Yeah. But uh, no, I think it's a great film that people should watch. Is it the best Pixar film ever? No. But again, no. those are some stupidly high bars. If this was by DreamWorks, you know, it'd be considered wow. Like they came to play. They came. They came to the dance. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. But your Pixar, you know, we expect the best of the best. Like if Scorsese released a subpar film, we'll all be pretty disappointed. You know. And I know that that's, that's not a fair expectation to them, but they chose to be where they are. <laughs> so, yeah. That's like my big thing with them. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think... Okay, so Dream Project. Imagine if Pixar animated like a trilogy of films, like Lord of the Rings style, like yeah. that long, that grand scope, but Dungeons and Dragons. Do you think Pixar would do like a... Like, uh, what's the word? Uh, like, they would take, like, a third property, like, like a third-party property and do something like that? Because I don't think they would. I think Disney wouldn't allow it, even if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, also... I think, I think, I think for, this is the closest you're going to get to something like that. Well, also, and I'll... Okay, it's, uh, talking out of context here. But one, yeah. another thing I want to talk about when it comes to the animation and all that... I love the spells and I love the dorkiness, the geekiness of it all. Yeah. Um, it's the dragon was actually kind of intimidating. Like that's something I looked yeah. at and I thought to myself, "Damn! Like I, I would want to fight that in an actual campaign." <laughs> Are you as yeah. much of a D and D fan as I am, or no? Uh, you remember that time that I played with your team? Yeah, that's like one of the five times that I played D and D in my life. Damn, because. I'm not I'm genuinely surprised. I thought you would have enjoyed it more. See, that's the thing. I, I can be very eloquent and I can write and I can do all these things, but I am not a very on my feet creative person. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a lot of references. But if you, if you remember, I didn't know a lot of what to do in that game and I thought that everyone had like a script. But no, they were just all making it up as they go. I'm not like that. <laughs> so, I everything I have to do has has to be carefully calculated. <laughs> I'll, 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 okay, I'll tell you what. Someday I'll educate you a little more on it, and we'll bring you back in further. Absolutely, I I love nothing more. I mean, hey. I still have my camera sheet. Lasseter's yeah. gone. Jobs is passed. You said <laughs> Pete Doctor's gone, right? Yeah. Uh, Jim Morrison. Jim Morris. No idea. Huh. Then there's Mr. Smith and Mr. Catmull. Huh. Don't think I know who they are, but... No, I'm, I just, I wonder at what point are all these people going to leave Pixar? Like, I wonder when the original founders, like, leave, I wonder at what point do they you know, call it? I'm going to, I'm going to answer that question with a quote from Thor Ragnarok. Asgard is not a place, it's a people. And I think the story of Pixar, even though it's, it's been written in gold letters, it, it's going to read like Shakespearean tragedy if things like, if, if movies like this keep coming out, where they focus more on being, on being relevant now instead of being relevant always. And we'll see. Like, I don't see Pixar dying anytime soon, of course. They have, they have tons of ways they can keep thriving. But I, I don't think the popularity is going to be the same. It's going to be as, as timeless as, as it did when movies like the first Toy Story and Bugs Life. like what Bugs Life never gets shout outs. Bugs Life deserves shout outs. It doesn't. Um, Fuck you. No, no, I, I'm I'm confirming what you said. You know, it doesn't get the 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 respect that it does, and it's 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 got its moments. It's not perfect, but it's got its moments. Fair. I just I, I just like I said, I don't see people quoting onward the same way that I don't know. I'm still hearing the freaking song from Coco every like every once in a while, like I see it reference or something. Hmm. And and believe it or not, that is what makes the longevity of a film. Now, I don't know, maybe in 
10 years, people are going to have like a super nostalgic crate for this film. And I don't know, maybe they'll find the mom hot the way we thought the mom from Incredibles was hot. I don't know. You know, I doubt so that, things but okay. Happened. Stranger things have happened. I don't know. But no, no, no. That show's on Netflix. It's still pending. <laughs> um, and actually, you know, I think we need to do a special on Pixar because I'm looking at it right now. This was their 22nd film. Yeah. And I think the first 11 films were, it can easily be called like the golden age of Pixar. And yeah. then after that, it will sequel Mania or like the Bronze Age. Yeah. And then I think hopefully, if I'm right, Onward might be the new Platinum Age because Onward was good. And I think if they only get better from here, we have a lot to look forward to. I'm looking forward to Soul now. I'd love nothing more because like I said, this studio has given me a lot of great films and I, I never root for studios to fail, especially such a big one that has given me like a lot of good films. So if, if Soul is amazing and the next, uh, and the next uh, four movies that they have scheduled for the next three years are amazing, then all power to them and I'll see them in opening night and great and I'll love nothing more. It's just that right now, I am way more excited about, um, about the next project that, uh, that the people, about, I'm way more pumped about the, 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 the sequel to uh, Spider-Verse. I'm way more pumped for uh, whatever Wes Anderson does next with animation, um, way more pumped for whatever Laika does next for animation, uh, whatever Makoto Shinka decides to do now. Um, I'm way more, uh, uh, Miyazaki is coming back. I'm, I'm way more excited on, on, on other studios. I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to sound like a hipster or, or, or anything, but I'm just saying like, can the, pe the person that has been on charge for so long stay relevant when they're putting out something like this? You know, which is a, which is a product that is is good, but it's not it's not on the par with everything that they've done so far. That's that's like my big gripe with this with this film, not the film itself, but what the film represents on the standards. You know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's a discussion that we should probably have again sometime very soon. We'll have a Pixar discussion. Yeah. What was it? Okay, so your final verdict was good film. Keep going. My final verdict is. Good film. Would I watch it again? Only if I'm with someone who hasn't seen it and they really want to watch it. But I wouldn't seek it out again. But that's it. Like, I, I don't have a lot of thoughts post the film. I just, I enjoyed it during. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not grabbing into my seat, like, all excited, wanting to see it again. The, the same way that I thought of that, that I felt when I watched something like Into the Spider-Verse, where the movie ended... And in the next two days, all I could think was, I hate every single two hours that I'm not watching this film. Yeah. Um, oh. So that's those are my thoughts on Pixar's Onward. Do you have any closing art, any closing thoughts on the film? Um, much like <laughs> a Bug's Life, I wish more people would watch this. You know, you, you made a good point. I haven't seen anyone referencing it. I hope more people watch this. I feel like this film is in that ballpark of it's so good. Why don't you, why don't more people like it? Maybe it's because they haven't seen it. Maybe it's because mm -hmm. it's not like on uh, McDonald's kids meals right now, and we're in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. But eh, I hope I hope more people. Do watch you this think? Film. Do you think that maybe the pandemic affected it? Oh hell like, yes! Hell cause yes! Because like, because like at least at least here in Mexico, the movie came out like a week before it got really really bad. You know, oh, hell, like two hell weeks yeah. before before they were like straight up, do not leave your house. Straight up, like, don't go to movie theaters, straight up. Because, like, I think this is the second to last movie I saw in theaters before this all started. And the last movie I saw in theaters was the, the My Hero Academia movie. And that came, uh, sorry, they came out. And, like, two days after that, uh, that's when they were, like, straight up, don't go outside. Like, don't, don't. So do you think that may have had something to do with it or not? Oh, definitely so. I think the pandemic, the issue being is, uh, at least from my immediate recollection, I don't remember there being anything in theaters to take with it if this was yeah. going to be the only like kids and i'm using about five sets of quotation when i say kids film mm -hmm. uh that was going to be out for at least you know a few weeks this one would have killed it in the box office i think if you're listening to us on youtube please like share and subscribe if you're listening to us via podcast please subscribe we greatly appreciate it thanks for joining us if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on movies go to the rollback.net i've been eddie 
and I've been Chema, and this was a rollback.